Hi guys, welcome to the session. My name is Dinesh. So today, today we're going to discuss about uh, why is modulation required for communication? A very interesting topic. So we'll finish up this discussion in the next 10 or 15 minutes. Right, so let's focus. So this is my experience and this is my profile. Right. So this is my telegram group. If you wish to ask me any doubts based on my subjects of expertise, you can contact me in this group. Right. So what is modulation? So if you observe, I have given you the definitions here. Okay. So very important uh, understanding here. So shifting the signal from low frequency to high frequency is called modulation. Wonderful. Most of you might be knowing this definition, right? Yes. One more definition is also there for this. So the process of changing the characteristic parameters. What are the characteristic parameters of a high frequency sinusoidal carrier? Frequency, phase and peak amplitude. So generally carrier, we represent it as C of T and carrier signal is a sinusoidal signal, something like this. And it has three parameters, peak amplitude, frequency and phase. Okay. So these three parameters we are calling as characteristic parameters. So the process of modifying these parameters According to message, according to message, if you modify these one of these parameters, that also can be called as modulation. Yes, any modulation. If somebody talks about modulation in communication, yes, you are, you are having this kind of carrier. And in that carrier, you are modifying one of these three parameters, one of them. We, do, we don't modify two or three of them. We modify only one of them. Okay, if you are putting our message in the peak amplitude, then we are modifying only the peak amplitude according to message. We are not disturbing frequency and space. Similarly for frequency and phase also, right? So modulation, what is the dictionary meaning of modulation? Dictionary meaning of modulation is modification or you can say changing something, right? So here also we are exactly following, uh, we can understand it from the dictionary meaning only. Yes, what exactly we are we modifying or what exactly are we modulating? We are modulating the carrier signal, a high frequency carrier signal. Why do we modulate? Uh, why, we, why do we modify or modulate a high frequency carrier signal? Because we want to shift the signal from low frequency to high frequency. So these two definitions are looking different. No, they are exactly same definitions. The point is there is a different, definitely a connection between. And what is that connection? See, every time domain signal has a Fourier transform, correct? And when the time domain signal changes, its Fourier transform also changes, correct? When the time domain signal changes, its frequencies also will change, right? So when you do, so whatever is the second definition, this is a time domain definition. This definition is talking about what happens in time domain. This is the time domain definition. This is the time domain understanding of what happens in, what happens when you do modulation. And the first definition is the same thing, whatever you do in time domain, but because of modifying this peak amplitude frequency or phase, what happens in frequency domain is shifting happens in frequency. When you do some modification in time domain, there will be some other, some modification happening in frequency domain, right? Yes. So when you do modification in time domain on a carrier signal, the modification that happens in Fourier transform or frequency domain is that shifting of low frequency signal to high frequency happens. Okay. So the message that we use for modulation is a low frequency signal. That low frequency message signal if you use to modulate this carrier, what happens? Because the carrier is a high frequency signal, our message gets shifted to that high frequency of the carrier. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, you have understood the definition of modulation. Okay. The purpose of this today's session is, is to understand why we need that modulation. Okay. Right. So let us understand further. So why do we need this modulation for the sake of communication? So modulation is required to enable wireless communication possible. If you want to do wireless communication without modulation, it is not possible. Why is that? Let's, let's see. So for wireless communication, for wireless communication to happen, do we need antennas or not? Without antennas, we can't do wireless communication, right? We need antennas, correct? And for antennas, what decides the antenna size? 
antennas antenna size is a very important parameter so antenna size depends on wavelength antenna size is proportional to wavelength okay wavelength of what whatever signal we want to transmit whatever signal we want to transmit antenna size is always proportional to wavelength of the signal whatever we signal we want to communicate using the antenna whatever signal we want to do wireless communication through the antenna that signals we that decides the antenna size don't think that any antenna we can transmit any signal that is not possible for a certain signal with certain frequency or wavelength we need a certain size with we need an antenna with certain size okay it's not like a random antenna you can take and transmit anything that you want that's not possible right so antenna size is proportional to wavelength of signal so if you want to understand exact sizes also i can give you some information here so antenna size it's not a fixed size okay there are different types of antennas for different types of antennas the sizes are different okay for example there are some antennas which use lambda by 2 lambda is the wavelength lambda by 2 size some there are some antennas which use lambda by 4 as the size there are some antennas which by which use lambda by 10 and there are some other antennas which use lambda by 20 for example what antennas use lambda by 2 as the size if you are using some kind of antenna called dipole antenna they use lambda by 2 as the size if you are using monopole kind of antennas or quarter quarter pole kind of antennas those use uh, lambda by 4 size and if you have heard yagi wood antenna yagi wood antenna is uh, the antenna which we used to use uh, very uh, long long back like uh, for dd national like 15 20 years back uh, we used to have only one uh, one channel uh, doordarshan channel so for that everybody used to use one channel one antenna which used to look like this right everybody's home there used to be some antenna like this uh, that is called as yagi wood antenna for that design of that kind of antenna the size of the antenna is whatever signal you want to transmit for that signal's wavelength divided by 10 if that is the if the size is designed according to that then only it will be able to transmit the signal or receive the signal with very less attenuation or it can receive and transmit comfortably and this lambda by 20 is the size for microchip antenna microchip antennas which we use in mobiles or in lots of uh, devices all small devices whatever small devices we use in all those devices we use microchip antennas okay so there are different types of antennas based on the type of antenna the size of the antenna is slightly different but finally antenna size is proportional to wavelength that is a fundamental point that is the most important right so sir so you are talking about antenna size how how is that related to modulation yes, so let's understand this so let us take a voice signal let us take a voice signal for this voice signal the frequencies in the voice signal are 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz this is the range of frequencies that are present in a voice signal okay so we are talking about frequencies for every frequency there will be a corresponding wavelength so what is the wavelength for this frequency wavelength for this frequency is c equal to lambda equal to c by f plus 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 300 which is 10 power 6 or uh, you can say you can say 1 mega meters right or 1000 kilometers So, if you want to transmit this particular frequency in a voice signal, you need an antenna of size thousand uh, kilometers, or uh, let's say if you are using an antenna of size lambda by ten, it is hundred kilometer size antenna you you need. But that is not all. Okay, you are not going to transmit. You there is it's not sufficient to transmit only three hundred hertz because in a voice signal it's not just three hundred hertz. Range of frequencies from three hundred to three point four kilohertz are existing. So, what is the wavelength of three point four kilohertz? If you use the same formula. approximately you'll get because this is 10 times more or little more than 10 times approximately it will be like 100 kilometers so if you use lambda by 10 formula for antenna size the antenna size required for to transmit this frequency is 10 kilometers so to transmit all the frequencies in a voice signal you don't you don't it's not sufficient to to have one antenna we need multiple antennas because one antenna size is not sufficient so if you are using this uh, let's say lambda by 10 you are using So the antenna size used to transmit this frequency is 10 kilometers. If you are using that 10 kilometers antenna to transmit 300 300 hertz frequency, that's not possible because for 300 hertz you need a different size antenna. So one antenna is not sufficient 
to transmit this single voice signal, simple, si simple, single voice me message signal, we can't transmit using one antenna that a very big antenna. I hope you are understanding the complex here. A low frequency signal, a low frequency signal has high wavelength. A low frequency signal has a high wavelength. See, see these are low frequencies and it has very huge wavelength, very big wavelength. And wavelength decides the antenna size. So the antenna size required is also very huge. So low frequency messages, it's almost impossible to transmit wirelessly. Lower the frequency, it becomes more impossible. Okay. So that's why what are we doing? If we can shift the signal frequencies from low frequency to high frequency, then as the frequency increases, so if you do modulation of voice signal, so if you see in mobile communication, also we do modulation, right? To what frequency we do modulation? To a 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, the, that range of frequency, 800 megahertz to 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz range. In terms of around 1 to 2 gigahertz range, we modulate the signal. In mobile communication, those are the frequencies that we use. Let's say 1 gigahertz. So what is the highest frequency that will be there? 1 gigahertz plus 3.4 kilohertz will be the highest frequency and lowest frequency will be 1 gigahertz minus 3.4 kilohertz will be the lowest frequency. But anyway, so for this one, what is the wavelength? Wavelength is C by F, C is 3 to 10 power 8 divided by frequency is 1 giga, 1 giga means it's 10 power 9. So this is negligible compared to this. So that's why I'm substituting only this part. So this is equal to 0 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters you can say. Now, if you use a lambda size of uh, antenna size of lambda by 10, let's for this for calculation sake, let's use this calculation. Antenna size is lambda by 10, let's assume. So then lambda by 10 is 3 centimeters. Is it possible to design an antenna of size 3 centimeters? Very easily, right? We can design that antenna with very less cost. We can design it comfortably. Right? So one single antenna, the two very small antenna is sufficient to transmit a modulated voice. But whereas a simple sing, sing, uh, there is an unmodulated voice, because it is a low frequency signal, it becomes almost impossible to transmit this voice signal wireless. Right? Because low frequencies means high wavelength. High wavelength means big antenna size. That to not single antenna but multiple antennas. So it is impossible to transmit a low frequency voice message signal or any low frequency message. So that's why if you do modulation, which means you are shifting the signal from low frequency to some high frequency. As you shift the signal from low frequency to high frequency, so for a high frequency signal, wavelength is small. As the wavelength is small, antenna size also will be small. Antenna size is small, then it will become easy to construct an antenna and use it for wireless communication. Right? So now tell me, is wireless communication possible without modulation? Without modulation, you can't shift a signal from low frequency to high frequency. Without shifting a signal from low frequency to high frequency, we can't reduce the antenna size. If you can't reduce the antenna size, you can't design it and we can't uh, construct it and use it. Right? So that's why modulation is compulsory for wireless communication. We got one most important reason for wireless uh, for modulation let's explore one more reason right so modulation can be used to frequency division multiplex signals and hence transmit multiple signals through the same communication channel one more very very important uh, uh, reason for modulation right so let's see the if you take a voice signal voice signal has frequencies from 300 to 3 point, 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz okay Right. Now, my voice signal also will have that same range of frequencies. Your voice signal also will have same range of frequencies, correct? Then if both our voice signals are having same same range of frequencies, and if uh, both our signals we want to transmit through the same channel, same wireless channel or wired channel also. So whatever uh, reason that we are talking about in this slide, it is applicable for both, both for wired as well as wireless communication. Okay. Let's say voice signal 1. Voice 2, voice 3, voice 4, okay, all of them are having same frequencies. So if you add them, if you just add them up, what happens? My voice frequencies and your voice frequencies are getting mixed and we can't separate them because they're having overlapping frequencies, right? They're having overlapping frequencies. Let's say I am plotting the Fourier transform of the first signal as a triangle spectrum, minus 3.4 to plus 3.4. 
Second signal is having some other shape because it's a different signal. Just to indicate that it is different and diff having showing a different shape. And third signal is having some other different shape. Now, if you add these three, you'll get a different shape altogether. From this shape, you can't separate these shapes. So, which means if you combine these three voice signals and send through a single wire, then what happens? At the other end of the wire, you'll get a mixed signal, which means addition of all three voice signals. You can't separate them. You can't separate them because it's not possible to separate because when you add these three, it's like two plus three plus four, which is like something like nine. By looking at this nine, can you say that, okay, it is because of addition of two plus three plus four. We can't say that, right? It can be because of one plus one plus seven also or because of some other uh, numbers also, right? Similarly, from this resulted signal, from this result signal, whatever you're going to get here, you can't get back these signals. So if you want to send multiple signals, you can't just blindly add them and send through the channel. It's not that that's not the best way to send. That's not that's not at all a reliable way of sending. So what you should do? So these signals, you add them, but not like this. What you do is what you do is shift the signal to some frequency f1 and shift the signal to some other frequency f2 and shift the third signal to some other frequency f3. Now they don't have any overlapping. Their shapes are preserved. As long as the shapes are preserved, our quality is preserved. So shift the signals to different frequencies. If you are shifting the signals to different frequencies, we call it as frequency division multiplexing. Multiplexing means mixing. Okay. Frequency division multiplexing means mixing the signals in such a manner that they are using different frequencies. They are using non-overlapping frequencies. Okay. So this shifting from zero frequency to some high frequency F1, F2, F3. Is that what we call as modulation? Yes, right. Modulation means shifting from low frequency to high frequency. Without shifting the low frequency signals to some high frequency, different high frequencies, is it possible to mix the signals or multiplex the signals? It's not possible to frequency division multiplex the signals without the help of modulation. Right? So, it helps. Modulation helps us in wired communication as well as wireless communication. For wireless communication, there are two reasons. The reasons are, antenna size, reduction of antenna size. Second thing is multiplexing, frequency division multiplexing. Right. Whereas for wired communication, we don't need any antenna for wired communication. So first advantage is not there uh, for modulation for wired communication. But the other advantage, frequency division multiplexing advantage is there for wired communication because of modulation. Okay. So that is the understanding of modulation. Why is it required for communication? Okay. So I'm asking a simple question here. How does modulation help in wireless communication? Quickly answer me. Reduce antenna size? Yes. Can we use it in frequency division multiplexing? Yes. Is it helping us in time division multiplexing? No, not at all. Modulation helps us in shifting to different frequencies. Okay. So it's only modulation helps us only in frequency division multiplexing, but not in time division multiplexing. So it's an MSQ question. You can say A and B both are correct answers. Right. So that's it, guys. We'll meet in some other session on some other topic, some other interesting topic. Okay. Until next time. Bye bye. Take care.